I think what the, what's happened now is a lot of people around the world have said, wait a second, if the government can just shut me out of the banking system, I don't feel like I have, like I need, you know, especially since we're in a cash-based world anymore, like right. I have to wonder, are there alternatives? Is there something else that I can seek to help me in my life, to protect myself in case my own government decides that they're going to, to shut me off? Yeah. Man, that, that's got to be raising a lot of questions right now for folks. And I think that uh, I talked to my friend about this a few days ago. It's just expediting this process. And it is. Um, it's expediting the process of, you know, and another thing, censorship. You can look at that as a form of censorship. Mm -hmm. Look at what's happening to Joe Rogan right now yes. on Spotify. Yes. If the and not if when Joe Rogan likely moves to some sort of a web three sort of format. And I would love you to like dive in and give your explanation of web three because you're an engineer and you're way smarter than me. Um, I want to talk about that, but like, just imagine what happens when people start basically going directly to their customers and they're not utilizing web two platforms like Facebook, like Spotify, like even Google for that matter to find what they need mm -hmm. to transact, how they want to transact or listen to what they want to listen to. So that brings us into our next conversation, which I know we're probably going to get cut short on. Um, but I want you to give us an introduction into what is decentralization web three. And let's just like start with like a one on one version of that for people who have no idea what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. So decentralization, um, can definitely be like a muddy concept, but decentralization is, I, I think like, like Bitcoin as an example is, is, is a good example of a decentralized system. And what it essentially means is that it's, it's a, a rule or consensus amongst multiple people. But again, some key properties to that is that nobody can stop me from participating in that system. Nobody can say, you can't because we don't like what you believe, we don't like what you look like, we don't like how you think, you cannot participate anymore. It doesn't matter. As long as I hold the token, the token is the key that gives me access. So in the case of Bitcoin, Bitcoin is the token for the Bitcoin network. Mm -hmm. it's, it's unfortunate they're named kind of the same thing, so that makes it kind of confusing. But as long as I hold Bitcoin the currency, I can participate in the Bitcoin network. And, and because of that, again, that permissionless uh, invitation to me to participate in that network, and then the, the consensus of all of these different, the groups that I mentioned earlier, there's the nodes, there's the miners, the consensus of these groups um, allows this whole harmonious ecosystem so that no one person controls it and that's what makes it so beautiful that anybody can participate and a group of people that participate can have that ownership. Right. And which brings us into the next term that I would like to kind of discuss, which is DAOs, Decentralized okay. Autonomous Organization. So give us like a 10,000 foot view of what is a DAO and how is that going to affect Web3? Yeah, so let's, okay, let's take a step back and talk about, let me touch on Web3 first, yeah, then, we'll, then we'll get to DAO. So, so people think like, well, Web3, that must mean that there was a Web2 and, and a Web1. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> so Web1, uh, Web1 early days was just like the idea of publishing to the internet. In the early days of the internet, you just had a bunch of academics that they could publish. And then along came, uh, you know, newspapers deciding, oh, I, okay, I can publish the news online. And right. so it was just more about, publishing okay web 2 came along and said well let's actually make it so not only do we have all this publishing but let's make it so that people can publish and connect with each other and so that's where we saw the rise of social networks mm -hmm. facebook twitter like these are prime examples of web 2 companies right web 3 it's still very early but the concept is not only about publishing and socializing now it's also about ownership so in the web 2 world like twitter anybody or facebook anybody can use twitter or facebook for free okay but there's a downside to that you know they're not just providing this service for free because they're they're nice people over at facebook and, and twitter <laughs> hq and I'm, maybe they are maybe they're not but that's not what they're doing <laughs> right. they, they, they run a business they've got to make money so how are they making money 
They're making money by saying, this is Bob Smith in Arkansas. Bob Smith in Arkansas likes, you know, hamburgers, likes the Dallas Cowboys, and in, is into those sorts of things. So then advertisers can be, advertisers can be like, ah, I'm selling, uh, you know, these new shoes or whatever. I'm selling this video game or whatever. Get me all the people that like, you know, these teams or these right. games, these Playstations or whatever. And then they pay Facebook for essentially your eyeballs, mm -hmm. for your viewership. So that's, that's web two. Now web three comes along and says, no, let's give, like, let's imagine, I'm just gonna, this is, this hasn't happened yet, but let's imagine a world where um, Twitter is completely decentralized and there's no advertisers that are paying for these eyeballs of Twitter or Facebook, but let's say that the participants in Facebook or Twitter are the ones that are actually making money in this 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 whole ecosystem. Mm -hmm. And by doing that, we're gonna give them a token into this Web3 network, which we can talk about DAOs in just a minute, yeah. but uh, in this Web3 Web network. So so here you are is like, let's say, you know, let's take Twitter again as an example. Um, you know, if, if a person has a million followers on Twitter, like that's a big following, huge, right? But on Twitter today, if you have a million followers, you don't get paid anything for that. Twitter doesn't pay you anything for that. Like, and so if you had a decentralized Twitter on Web3 and you had a million followers, you would you would get paid for the million followers consuming the content and participating in, in the ecosystem. So at a high level, that's what that means. But it also, it has another interesting property that is important for us to talk about. So. In the Web2 world, rightly or wrongly, Twitter said to an acting president, Donald Trump, we're gonna remove you from Twitter. Rightly or wrongly, right? It is their, I mean, I believe that it's Twitter's right to be able to say who can be on their platform, right? But again, for the, the democracy, was that a good thing to have a standing president removed from Twitter? I don't know, a person could debate that all along. But in a Web3 world, something like that, would not be possible. No, it's it's not even in in the realm yeah. of possibility. Right. Because that individual owns that following yes. because of what they are providing to the ecosystem, which is the number one currency inside of that, which is value. Mm -hmm. People actually bringing value, comedic value, it's probably him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> disruption value, mm -hmm. um, educational value. Yep. entertainment value, all of these things. And, and they talked about artists using non-fungible tokens. So we'll come back and talk about that another time. But uh, people that are going to be bringing value to the world in the next 10 years will dominate Web3. Yes. If they embrace the technology. Yes, yes. And, and the technology is still really early. So a lot of the Web3 things that we're seeing today are still very focused on cryptocurrency. So to give an example of that, um, there are uh, these these platforms online that are all built on these blockchains and it allows people to take loans and earn money. So uh, you can imagine a platform where you're, you go in, you're like, I'm gonna deposit my, my Bitcoin and I'm gonna earn some interest on that. Mm -hmm. And so there's some platforms that allow people to take even, there's, there's these actually, they're called stable coins. Mm -hmm. And so it's a dollar equivalent on as a cryptocurrency, tokenized as a cryptocurrency. And there's some platforms that allow people to earn anywhere from five, 10, even 20%. And people are pooling money in into these platforms and they're taking loans. Now, I'm not gonna say there's not risk here. There is risk. I mean, we're talking about this new technology. We're talking about smart contracts, which is a whole nother can of worms. <laughs> and and these, things, they, these things get hacked too. So it's very, very early, but eventually an ecosystem will emerge for people to do things where they have full ownership, full control like of their audience and of the content that they create and publish.